A market crash is probably one of the biggest fears of an investor, if not the biggest in general. It is a risk that is best avoided. However, history has proven time and again that a market crash more often than not cannot be avoided entirely. Today in our video, we introduce you to the South Sea Company, noted for one of the most devastating stock market crashes of all time. Some categorize a stock market crash as a stock market index, losing more than 10% of its value in a single day. In contrast, others believe that once there is a significant loss in the stock market's value within a short period, it can be classified as a market crash. Simply put, we can say that a sharp decline in the value of stocks and the price of shares across a significant cross-section of a stock market results in tremendous loss. The South Sea Company was a British joint stock founded in 1711 and created as a public-private partnership to consolidate and reduce the cost of the national debt. The subsequent crash the company experienced in 1720 came to be known as the South Sea Bubble. The South Sea Company underwent the British national debt, which stood at 30 million euros on a promise of a 5% interest from the government and was granted a monopoly by the House of Lords to trade with South America in return for a loan of 7 million euros to finance the war against France. The promise of an endearing amount of interest launched speculations and fraudulent companies all around the country, leading to a rise in shares. Huge money was invested, stocks increased overwhelmingly, and large fortunes were made. By the summer of 1720, South Sea Company shares had become excessively valued, and companies enjoyed significantly high returns. In France, the French economy had undergone a huge set of reforms under a Scottish economist called John Law. His ideas helped speed up the French economy and policies, however, attempts to quickly modernize France's economy crumbled and resulted in the crash of the French stock market. Some investors, seeking to cushion their loss, moved their money out of the Paris market to London and invested in the South Sea Company. Inflation of the London stock market attracted more investors and pushed up prices in the short term. Consecutively, prices increased from 100 euros in 1719 to 1,000 euros by August 1720. The bubble, which had been floating for quite some time, soon burst with stocks crashing and people all over the country losing huge amounts of money. Before, the South Sea Company had aggressively encouraged the purchase of more shares through installment plans of loans, and with speculations running already wild, it did not take long for many people all across the country to invest. 462 members of the House of Commons and 112 peers in the company were involved in the crash. The crash happened in the early days of the stock market, and therefore financial theory, education, and journalism were visibly absent. Following the economic recession, increased cases of suicide and massive outcry from the public with politicians demanding an inquiry. A parliamentary inquiry was held after the bursting of the bubble to discover its causes. Now the real reasons behind the South Sea bubble are more complicated. The company assisted the government in managing its debt and struggling to pay holders of the debt on time. Due to legal difficulties, investors' challenges with selling their debt to others further augmented the situation and encouraged debt holders to partner with the company in exchange for shares. The parliamentary inquiry resulted in the expel of John Aislaby, Chancellor of the Exchequer and several members of Parliament in 1721, and the arrest of company directors who also had their estates forfeited. Robert Walpole was made Chancellor of the Exchequer and divided the national debt incurred into three between the Bank of England, Treasury, and Sinking Fund. The notorious economic bubble, which was created, ruined thousands of investors. Rather interestingly, the Bubble Act of 1720, which forbade the creation of joint stock companies without a royal charter, was promoted by the South Sea Company itself before its collapse. With a crash, the impact can vary from market to market. In 1987, after five years of a strong bull market, the Dow Jones Industrial Average DJIA, and S&P 500 both dropped over 20% following markets throughout Europe and across Asia. Some foreshadowing of an imminent market crash includes irrational exuberance as exhibited by the investors of the South Sea Company 
where overenthusiasm and widespread optimism resulted in a catastrophic turn of events in the last run. With irrational exuberance, prices have every authentic display of consistent value, which causes investors to overlook the underlying value under the assumption that the bull market will continue to run for an invariable amount of time. Risks are ignored and investors only seek to gain higher returns. Excessive valuation is also a sign to look out for in determining the volatility of a stock market. With a surge in demand for shares, investors who are quick to invest may do so at a resultant loss, especially if fundamentals such as revenue, earnings, and growth projections decline and affect the market price of stocks. Widespread complacency, otherwise known as market sentiment, and the inverted yield curve are all telling signs of an imminent market crash. It is 1720, and we have just taken you through the trajectory of the South Sea Company and the South Sea Bubble, which has become a byword for a financial scandal over the years. We hope you learned a lot today. Remember to subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos on the stock market. Till we come your way again another time, enjoy the rest of your day.